Hello and welcome to episode number two of Punts and Bunts. Uh, this is going to be the episode where we talk about our division predictions. Here with me, I have Sean to my right and Robbie to my left. How are you guys doing? Doing great, man. Uh, how are you today? Um, I'm doing amazing. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah, and Sean, Sean, over to you. What about you, man? I'm good. Um, I'm getting kind of sick and tired of the NFL offseason already. Um, my team has been stripped and selling parts like a chop shop. And uh, it's really kind of killing me inside. Uh, I'm kind of playing the daily guessing game of like, is it a rebuild? Is it a reset? Either way, most of my favorite players are gone. Um, and it turns out, you know, all the rumors are that my next favorite player, DJ Mecca, might be on a trade. But that's mostly, I think, people wanting him. Seattle isn't saying they're going to get rid of him, but Seattle is also ominously using the same language about keeping DK Metcalf that they said about Russell Wilson. So I have zero faith that he's going to stay, but I swear to fucking God, if they trade DK Metcalf, I'm going to start knocking on Pete Carroll's door with violence in my mind. <laughs> Didn't you already do that after the Super Bowl? I want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> I relive that nightmare like every time I close my eyes. If I've I've never experienced like a relationship heartbreak. Like, you know, I've had I've been dumped, but I've never been like heartbroken until that moment. Until they called a passing play on the goal line. They had with the Marshawn arch- Lynch. <laughs> with Marshawn Lynch, who was tied for the league lead in touchdowns that season, which means there was no other running back that season who had more touchdowns than him, while he also only fumbled three times all season. And he was averaging, I think, almost five yards a carry. But I don't want to get into it. I don't I want to talk baseball because <laughs> baseball hasn't broken my heart like that. In fact, baseball, you know, the Cubs coming back from a 3-1 deficit, like, was almost as good as it hurt to see them throw the interception on the one-yard line or the two-yard line. So... Like I don't know, baseball. man. That that Rajay Davis home run pretty much broke my heart. I don't know if I, that was probably the saddest <laughs> I've ever been as a Cub fan, dude. <laughs> it was sad, but looking back on it, it, was, it made the game so much was, better. It, it made the game so, so much clutch better. on his side. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Off the camera too. Like just LeBron I mean, James going crazy. And I was like, it's like, I'm a Yankee fan, but I'm cheering for the <laughs> Indians who are now the guardians. But <laughs> I do remember after they won that game, I kept yelling like, show me LeBron, show me LeBron. <laughs> Cause I wanted to see that bitch cry. Yeah. All right. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to start with the uh, NL West. I, I don't think it's any surprise who I think we all picked. Uh, Diamondbacks. I, there you go. <laughs> so it is and a surprise. The Rockies, the Rockies with KB. <laughs> there you go. That's all they needed was just KB. Uh, they were well, Chris Bryant away from a from competing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the thing is, I mean, I, I think that you you got the Dodgers who obviously stacked and have gotten more stacked by with the acquisition of Freddie Freeman, um, among others. But uh I I think the Rockies are actually, I would, I don't think they'll be relevant in the next like two to three years, but you look a little bit beyond that. I think they could actually be a team that could fight for at least a wild card spot, if not more, depending on seeing what the Dodgers and Padres do down the road. But since we're here talking about 2022, clearly Dodgers going to take it. I don't think there's any argument. Yeah. I mean, I thought for a moment, the Padres, um, until I remember the Tatis injury, and it's like that, I think, is going to you know contribute to a slow start where in a division like that with the Dodgers and I mean, who knows what the Giants are going to do. I feel like, you know, you know, there's 100, you know, 62 games of baseball, but I still think that like starting off strong and having especially in a division where it's going to be kind of tight, you know, those early wins, I feel like were pretty important. Absolutely. And I mean, I think that the um, as for the Padres. I, I'd like to see what they can end up doing with some trades they could get going before the beginning of the season. I know it's really coming up quick, but uh, we'd like to see what could uh, what could really happen with that. Um, if they could actually end up shipping Osmer now that they have uh, Luke Voigt and see what goes on from there. Yeah. And uh, as far as their offseason, Padres offseason, uh, I think Padres fans would agree that they would have, like Robbie just said, just wish they would have done a little bit more. They were tied with Seiya Suzuki. He was supposedly working out over there with them. And like two days later, he signs with the Cubs. So uh, I mean, they did get Sean Manea, uh, which is a, a huge step. fifth starter. If you look at that starting rotation, whew, the dirty, rotation's man. pretty good. But um, <laughs> I just, 
other players that they just kind of missed out on or were tied to, and then they just didn't uh, go their way. And because of that, I also have the Dodgers uh, winning the West. Yep. I mean, I think the Padres could make a valid opportunity to wild card spots just to see them in the postseason postseason potential. Um, but I don't really know where they go beyond that. I mean, we'll see what happens once Tatis comes back and healthy from uh, from his injury. We'll see what we'll see what goes on there, and if they can end up getting some kind of package for Osmer. Right. So I guess we move on to the NL Central. Uh, Cubs, let's go. <laughs> remember, I'm the unbiased Cubs fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, it uh, pains me to say it, but I, I did, I did go with Cardinals. So yeah. it did, it did pain me to do it. I hated typing it, but I mean, you got, you got the guys on the corners there between uh, Arenado and Goldschmidt, and then. I don't know. I mean, it would make such a uh, such a storybook ending for the Pujols career and a Yachty career if they could somehow do something special there in St. Louis. Um, and as much as I don't want to see it, uh, it would end for some great baseball, like some it, it would just be some great things to see. I saw Sean kind of shake his head during the Molina Pujols. Oh, it killed me. It killed me to say that out loud. Like, I mean, I'm like, I mean. I, I, I literally like a guy was yelling at me in the in Cardinal State for calling Molina a pussy. So we got that going. But... <laughs> no, I mean, like I, I, you know, like you said, the story's cool. Um, I mean, it's two people that like, you know, it's like anything else. You have a team that it's like, even if there's cool stories, you still don't really want to see them. Right. Um, I mean, it is, it is neat. You know, the, the Pujols thing, you know, I'm curious to see, you know, what he actually does. I mean, is is the plan for him to just DH? Is he going to even DH be against there, lefties? There? Probably DH yeah, against probably. lefties. Say, is, he, is he even going to be even a consistent DH, or is he just going to kind of be a spot guy, situational bat he'll, kind of a he'll thing? pop into first base every now and again on a Goldschmidt off day? Um, he definitely will. I I don't think he'll take like in any big game scenario. They're not going to stick Pujols in that lineup and at first base because he is not nearly as uh, fluid on his feet as he once was. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but I always he, remember Pujols is the guy who has like a zero speed in all the MLB the show games, <laughs> <laughs> except for he had some throwback card that had like an irrational amount of speed that just seemed uh, very like like the person who programmed that that day went. It was a Cardinals fan went, uh, yeah, sixty five speed sounds right. <laughs> you know, like, you know, know <laughs> zero, zero speed is funny to me because how can you be zero speed? That's like not moving. Like right. I always remember in that game, John Lester was a zero speed. I'm like, but. I mean, like it, he's at least walking. That's more than a zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so let me ask you guys one question about the Cardinals and Pujols. Do you think he'll get the 700 this year? He's 21 home runs away. No. No. Jose. No, I don't think he's going to have enough at bats. Oh, he'll get enough at bats. I mean, he's still got the pop, but I mean, I just don't think, uh, I just don't know if he's got what, what it takes to hit 20 home runs in a year again. I mean, well, that's what I mean by enough at bats, like enough, like at bats to have a consistent enough, like, going i don't know that he's gonna like sure he's gonna have 21 at bats in theory he could did it, get it but i don't think he's gonna have like you know for the the you know how many home runs does he hit for how many at bats i don't know I that gotcha. he's gonna have that many to get to 21 so I mean, he's, do you think he's oh go ahead jose sorry i was just gonna say so he's 21 short yes if i put the over under at 15 over or under for home runs for him that, to get? that he gets yeah oh that's tough. I'd, say, I'd say probably about I, i'd say about 15 so i'd probably say the over because if we're taking 15, 15 and a half over, <laughs> okay then under if, if I, I, then i'd say then i'd say under because i think he'll probably hit about 14 to 15 home runs this year all right i'm guessing about a thousand okay so you all right so i'll go on record right here and say that he hits 18 home runs <laughs> how, how sweet how like, sweet would it be if he had 20 home runs and on the last at bat of the season, the regular season where it counts, he hits one and it gets robbed. That would be amazing. <laughs> or it swings foul, by a cub, like just like three player. feet from the foul line. Yeah. Oh, just like uh, like Martine robbed. Uh, I can't remember who it was oh, the right, Cardinals, right, right. So, yeah, to, to win clinch. the central. And uh, yeah, was that twenty seventeen? I think seventeen. Yeah, to yeah. clinch in so. seventeen. Yep. Um, Leonis d- Martine. That's who. It yeah. Was. Uh, <laughs> just one little quick thing about the Brewers. I have them. In second, uh, but I would not be surprised if I saw the Cardinals team kind of implode. And the the Brewers just pitch like every year they 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 pitch. The offense is a little bit, 
you know, questionable, especially with Yelly, uh, which I think he's going to bounce back. I think he has a potential to bounce back. Uh, I think he'll be, I think he'll be a little better. I don't know if he's going to be a full on bounce back to MVP, I, but I think I, he'll be, I think he'll right. be a little bit. Yeah. Back. Yeah. I'm not saying he's going to be MVP Yelly. I'm just going to say like, he's going to go back. Uh, you know, he's not going to be the Yelly of the past two years. I agree. Um, I, I, I agree with that. I, I think he'll, I think he'll bat like a solid 275 plus. So, right. Um, so I guess we go on to the NL East. Uh, I'll send it over to Sean to start it off here. Let's go with Sean. Phillies. But what about the Phillies? Uh, Harper, Castellanos, Schwarber. I feel like they've made enough moves to like compete. I mean, I'm also a big Castellanos fan. Um, I mean, like he's he's somebody I always want to see do well. I mean, even when it's on the Reds. Castiano strives one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, like, I just feel like, you know, Castellanos and Bryce Harper and some of those players on that team, I feel like there's enough talent. I mean, that division, I don't see the Braves. I mean, I feel like when they won, you know, they have talent for sure, but I feel like they kind of, like, were a surprising team to be doing as well as they were. Um, I mean, I'm not as into the baseball world as you guys are. So maybe I'm the only one who's caught off guard by it, but um, you know, losing Freddie Freeman, uh, you know, the nationals have Juan Soto and then nobody uh, in the Mets and the Marlins. I mean, I feel like our perennial dumpster teams. Um, I mean, the, the Mets, if, if as, as long as they can stay healthy with that pitching staff, which is not to stay true to form so they far already this not. year. Already... <laughs> um, I, I, I do have them in second place. Uh, I mean, I think they could still, they, they're still a decent team. I mean, it's just that it's, it's the, the hard part, which, I mean, you could say this about any team. They got to stay healthy. If they don't stay healthy, I don't know if they can do anything. Um, and I mean, the Braves, they, they won the world series with a lot of injuries on that squad last year. I have them second. I have them I, second in that division. The, the Braves. Yeah. Okay. I, I got the, I got the Braves in third and then Nats and Marlins had gotten rounding out the four or five spot with the Phillies winning it. Uh, the Phillies pitching staff does scare me a little bit. Um, I know their, their, their lineup's going to be deadly, but their pitching staff's kind of a little bit, a little shaky for me, but I mean, I still think they're going to be great. I mean, they, I still think they're going to win that division. What about you, Jose? Uh, I think we've had the same discussion the past two or three years and I probably always goes with the Phillies and I always go with the Braves and (laughs) this year is going to be no different. I'm going to go with the Braves once again. <clears throat> you guys were talking about that the Braves kind of, yeah, they won the World Series, but they lost Freeman. But then they also got back Olsen, who's That's younger true. and could have arguably, I mean, looking at the numbers, he had just as good of a season as Freeman, if not almost even better on some of the aspects. And then, and then you get Ronald Acuna back, mm-hmm. who's top three player in the entire league. So That's a good point. That's a good point. I, I agree. I feel I agree. like with them though, and I, this is every sport and I feel like every sport, there's the best team. There's the best team that year. And there's the team that played the best baseball or the team that played the best football. And like, for example, like you could say last year, the Dodgers were the best team, like top to bottom talent. I, I, just as an example, you know, I don't know that the Braves were the best team in baseball, but they played the best at the right moments. I feel like. Like, I don't know that you would look at that team and their roster. Like, that's the best team this year. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, that's why you play all the games. And I think it's the same with football. There's years where we I mean, look at the 49ers last year in the playoffs. They by me, by no means were one of the better teams in football that year, but they played the right kind of football at the right time. And I feel like that's kind of how that Braves World Series was. It was not necessarily that they won because they were the best team in baseball so much as they played the best baseball at the right time. Right, right, and and to Jose's point though about the Matt, Matt Olson acquisition, I guess I didn't really take that fully into consideration uh, when making my prediction. I still would say the Phillies because, like Jose said, that's my thing for the last couple of years. When we did our MLB the Show season, I picked the Phillies, and I almost won the thing except for that one guy who likes to throw pitches way out of the zone. Um, Don't swing at him. No, well, I I wasn't. That was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, regardless, uh, to Jose's point though, uh, Matt Olson being younger. Um, he also played a great career in Oakland, the furthest thing from a hitter's park. Like Oakland is probably the most, the most pitcher friendly park in baseball. And I mean, arguably, obviously, but uh, it's just such a touch big grounds. It's just not, it's not meant for hitters. 
And yeah. uh, what what can he do there at uh, at Truce Field there in Atlanta? It'll be I, it'll be definitely a sight to see. Have you seen the overlay of Matt? And I know it's it's one year to another year, but have you seen the overlay of Matt Olson's uh, hits? Uh, at home in Oakland overlaid on Truist Park he'd be like touching an extra like another like seven or eight home runs if I, been did, I did see with that the Braves yep uh, I did see I did see that that's like year. that and I think that would be and yeah now that we've mentioned this I, I still don't give the Bra- the Braves the division but I do think that that's going to uh definitely going to help the Braves out and give them a a, a good lineup a good solid lineup with Acuna it's and be close. Uh, I, I, I have no doubt that that's, that's a division that I can, it was the same as Robbie. I didn't think about the Matt Olson part of it, but you know, I can see that division kind of coming down to the last few weeks of baseball. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be who, tight. you know, yeah. that division's always tight. That yeah. division's always a, a barn burner. Like uh, usually like, you know, the Dodgers for the last, however many years have been a, been pretty much a front runner. It's been, it's been even hardly a, a fight with the exception of those even years where the giants were being relevant. Um, but it's just, I, I, and some think of those that, years, the Dodgers were still winning the division. It's just the giants were winning it like in 14, <laughs> they were a wild, card, they were a wild exactly. card, So, and they were, I think uh, where they, they were a couple other times too. Are they, I mean, they, they fought their way. I mean, yeah. I think in 16, they were a wild card team too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And they, they almost, they could have very easily beat the Cubs in that divisional series round. Yeah. So then here we go with the AL West, uh, which is the division of Sean, one of Sean's favorite teams. <laughs> the division uh, of Sean. So I'm going to try to, yeah, <laughs> Sean's division. Uh, I'm going to try and guess who he picked, uh, but I'll let him tell you guys. <laughs> the Mariners. Uh, I mean, I think Jose and I talked about this last year, you know, they were one of those teams that you could see really kind of coming up. You can kind of look to the next few seasons and go, that's going to be something to look out for. I feel like they've made some solid moves. I mean, they maybe they didn't make the, the splashiest of signs of trades, but I feel like they made some solid moves um, both with pitching staff and, you know, at the plate. So I, I think if they're going to have any year to kind of kick off their, their chance to really start making that postseason push, I think this is going to be it. Right. I agree. I think that this is a stacked division. There's no doubt that this division is absolutely yeah. stacked. Uh, the Rangers have made a lot of big moves this year. Uh, the angels continue to make big moves. Um, and I mean, it's, I, I, this was probably the toughest division I had top to bottom to try and to try and lay everything out. Like, uh, I mean, the Mariners just missed the playoffs last year. They were two games out of a wild card spot. They, uh, they had 90 wins. They were a 90 win team. Uh, they just, just fell behind the Yankees who were a 90 who obviously were 92 win team. Um, so I think the Mariners could make a good push. Um, I, I did pick the angels. Um, I do think that that's, I think they're going to be a good team again, but again, back to my point on the Mets, they got to stay healthy. Trout needs to stay off the injured list. Otani needs to keep doing whatever the hell he does with his, being a beast of a pitcher and can swing the bat better than <laughs> a good portion of just hitters in the game. So, I mean, Shohei's a beast and uh, I, I do got the angels. I got the, actually the Rangers rounding up uh, in second. Actually, I have the Rangers in a wild card spot, which is kind of a bit of a ballsy pick, but I mean, who knows? Mm-hmm. So this one, like, like you guys are saying, was a little bit tough for me because yeah, they are. A lot of these teams got better. Uh, I guess minus Oakland, who just sold the entire team. So um, <laughs> wait, they're gonna be in Vegas in a couple of years, just like the Raiders. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did still go with Houston. Uh, I guess they've made it to five ALCSs the past five point. years. They have a lot I of got, experience. Uh, they have a lot of experience. Yes, they lost Korea, but this kid that's coming up uh, as their new shortstop uh, is supposed to be a stud. So I guess I'm I'm not ready to give up on them just like that. I'm going to give them this year, see uh, what this new Carlos Correa-less Houston Astros team looks like before I uh, I give up. 
Um, I do have the <laughs> a- <laughs> I do have the Angels in second though, with Seattle in third. Uh, See, I have Seattle, then the Angels, then the Rangers. Uh, I put the Astros last because fuck them. Um, that was a completely biased selection. I like when I filled this out. The first thing I did is put the Astros last. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping if I write it enough times, it'll just happen. Like I can will it into the universe. Well, I can um, I can like, tell you, I, I attended a uh, the last game the Astros ever played in the National League, and it was the Cubs versus the Astros. And uh, I think the Cubs had 101 losses that year, <laughs> and the Astros had 107 losses that year. Um, and have to say that that was one uh, one wild game went to extra innings. I think Brian LaHare had a walk off hit for the Cubs. <laughs> so there you go, Sean. There's your Astros in last place. <laughs> and, and how many years later was it that then the Cubs won the World Series and then followed by the Astros? So yeah, that would have been 2012, and the uh, Astros had 107 losses, and Cubs had 101 losses, and so just just four years later, Cubs win the World Series. Five years later, Astros win the World Series. So right there, you have 200 lost teams battling it win out. Win the World Series. But, but oh, oh. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, it's just the Astros. I think, I mean, it's, that's great. That's one great thing about baseball is you see a lot of parity in the, in the standings. With the exception of, you know, the Red Sox, Yankees, Dodgers are always in the playoffs. Yep. But, um, uh, so I guess that takes us to the AL Central. All right, um, I'll take it from here to start on this one. Go for it. Um, <laughs> and another one. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. I was just gonna say another. I, you just said you're gonna take it, but I'm. I'm just gonna say that it's gonna be another one that's gonna pain me as a Cubs fan to say this yep. 2022 and, season's gonna be a. It, <laughs> well, you know, you know what? I mean, I ended up going with Detroit. Uh, I, oh. I think the White Sox are completely the better team. I'm not gonna argue that at all. Um, but I just. I don't know how it's going to be with them playing. Like, they really struggled against good teams last year. Like if you look at their schedule, they, and they did fight a lot of injuries, um, but they've not made a lot of moves this off season. Now I know they did just get Pollock from, uh, from LA for, uh, for Kimbrel. And that was a, that was a good move. I think that was a good move on both sides, assuming Kimbrel could get back to his, his decent, decent showing. But I, I, I don't know. I just really like Detroit's acquisitions. I like the acquisition of Javi Baez. I think they have a good rotation. Um, I mean, you still got Miguel Cabrera who still will get some reps in at first base as well as being a primary DH on that squad. Uh, I think that lineup is solid. Uh, I think they will have a winning record and I think they'll, I, I, I hope they, I kind of hope more than think they're going to win that division. Cause I still think the Sox are going to win it, but it's all going to, it's all going to come down to health again. I mean, the Sox fought a lot of injuries last year. Detroit was, they're just young and inexperienced. Um, but they, it's gonna, it's gonna be a good division. I mean, the Twins are gonna be better this year too, especially with the acquisition of Correa. Um, and uh, real quick, who's gonna hit more home runs, uh, uh, Miguel Cabrera or uh, uh, Pujols? I was gonna ask something <laughs> similar to that. Yeah. Uh, well, so so kind of like as I often have said before, the uh, I, this is my problem with the designated hitter is you have these old guys who just are taking up a roster spot, making tons of money here to get a bat and sell tickets. Um, I mean, I remember seeing big El Cabrera when he was like 19 years old playing for the King County Cougars. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think you're probably going to see Pujols hit more home runs. Cause I think they're going to give him more at bats just because that's what the fans are going to want. So that's what I was going to ask who gets more at bats. Uh, who well, I guess just playing time in general, if it was going to be Pujols or Cabrera. Uh, then I guess Robbie says uh, Pujols, right? Yep, unfortunately, because yeah. I really do. I, I'm a big Miggy fan. I have a, I have a jar of Miggy salsa in my uh, in my desk in my office uh, that expired on August 5th of 2015. <laughs> it still sits there sealed with a clearance sticker of a dollar twenty five from a uh, local retailer. <laughs> so for some of these older dhs you know the pujos the miggies that, that are kind of like you said getting these jobs getting these spots do you think with teams like the the you know the the tigers and the cardinals you know if they're making a push do you think you see like those kind of players they're at bats like what is their at bat number going to look like before the all-star break and after you know what i mean because i can see you know if the cardinals start really making a postseason push you know 
it's less about the tickets and more about the wins. Do you think some of those guys are going to kind of see a drop off in their plate appearances to kind of in favor for some more, you know, run scoring or, or, you know, more ability players only for the fact that, you know, once you start getting into that real grind for the playoffs, you know, I can see going, okay, I don't really care if we sell out, we'll sell out because we're doing well. We're not going to sell it because who else is going to get at bats. Do you think some of those guys are going to lose those at bats in the second half of the season? If those teams are doing well. Yes. And no, I mean, I think that you could start seeing that, um, but they're still going to give him reps. So you're still going to see, especially with now the, the DH in the national league. So whenever Detroit's going to be playing an interleague game, um, Miggy's still going to get the DH spot. Uh, Pujols, the whole reason the Cardinals resigned him, they would not, I don't think the Cardinals would have resigned him if the DH was not enabled in the NL. I really don't. Um, it's just not a valid roster spot uh, in, 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 in a pitches hitting society. So I thinking that, uh, I think that, yes, I think that if they're starting to struggle, that's going to happen. Um, but otherwise, I, I think that they're still going to give them reps and they're going to start. They're going to click. I mean, they're, these guys are pro ball players. And yeah, I mean, uh, just going back to our picks, I had the White Sox uh, finishing first. Just It just looks like they're just going to run away with a division. I would, okay. I'd love Detroit or Minnesota uh, surprise <laughs> me, but uh, I just see the White Sox winning. Just going with my head here. <laughs> you're putting money on it? Yes. Oh yeah, uh, if, if I'm if I'm putting true money on it, I'd probably put the money on the White Sox. But I do think Detroit has what it takes to win that division, especially with how inconsistent that Sox team was there in 2021. Right. All right. So last but not least, probably one of the another pretty stacked <laughs> division, uh, the AL East. I'm gonna go first, and I will say that I have the Toronto Blue Jays winning the East. They just went out and did what they had to do to, to really just put themselves above, in my mind, the rest of the division. How about you? I, I definitely, I definitely see what you're coming from. I definitely think the Blue Jays have what it takes to win that division. I did go with the Yankees. Um, I do think that they are still a slightly better team with a little bit more experience. Um, however, I would not put it past the Blue Jays taking I think that's going to be a tight division as well between frankly the top four teams again it was tight all year last year with the Yankees Blue Jays Red Sox and Rays and I think you could very well see that and I mean the Orioles rounding out the bottom I uh, can't forget about the old O's <laughs> um, but I, I I do think the the Blue Jays are going to be they're going to be a hell of a team to watch people are going to have a lot of fun watching them I think they're just a little a year or two ahead of it um, but I, th- I think like if, if you want to say the Blue Jays are a World Series contender in 2022 I'd say it's possible. If you want to say it in 2023, I'd say absolutely. Sean, how about you? I got the Blue Jays as well. Um, I mean, I'm not as analytical or up to date as you guys are. So I picked it more because I like Vladdy. Um, I want to see him do well. I think, you know, the type of player he is and the commitment he puts to the game, you know, you've seen him recently, how much weight he's taken off. You know, he used to be, you know, for the first few years, he was one of those kind of bigger first basemen, you know, he, swings the bat hard he plays first base but I mean I you know I appreciate a guy you know it's kind of like when Schwarber you know slimmed down for the game too you know I appreciate players who kind of make those changes so I like him I like his story and I'd like to see him do well um I mean I also think they have the talent from what I've seen the last few years Jose and I talk about it um you know he used to make that comparison with the Mariners that both those kind of teams were on that upward trajectory um you know I think you said last year the the Mariners last year with the Blue Jays were the year before just that team that's just almost there they're just getting right up there um and I think it, I think it's come I think that time has come for them I think they're gonna you know they've they've got enough core players that have played you know enough years together I feel like um it'd be cool to see them do it too I mean I, I made some of these picks off of also like I said teams I want to see do it um and I, I picked the Blue Jays Awesome. So I think that brings us to the end of our division winner uh, predictions episode. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Uh, make sure to follow us on all the socials at punts and bunts on Instagram, Twitter, and obviously here on YouTube, subscribe, uh, hit the bell and uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks. Yep, later.